Hi guys, welcome to your second or third Super Collider tutorial. Um, depending on which way you're viewing it, uh, you should definitely go and check out uh, the old uh, video number two uh, from the old uh, Super Collider tutorials because the theory, uh, all the audio theory that we, we looked at is still valid and it's still true even though Super Collider has changed. So you definitely need to check that out. I'll put a link um, down below. Um, but as you can see, um, tutorial 2 here, programming basics. Um, I'm sorry if you've programmed before, but these are things that we kind of need to cover. Um, so, uh, the first thing that we're going to look at is comments. Um, because they're pretty important and you need to start using them straight away, pretty much. Um, so there's basically two types of comments, and they're pretty self-explanatory. There's single line comments and there's multi-line comments. Uh, as you can see at the start of this uh, of this text file that I have here, I'm already using a multi-line comment. Um, and a single line comment is denoted like so, which starts off with two forward slashes. Um, it's quite similar to other programming languages, but anyway. Um, if you don't know what a comment is, uh, when we're writing our uh, our code, we need a way to remind ourselves as programmers what uh, what's actually going on. So uh, it's it's nice to leave yourself little notes here and there. Um, so single line comments, um, and then oh, excuse me, and then multi line comments are for bigger things. They're usually used at the start of. Uh, of either a big section or the start of a program to say who wrote it and uh, what it is, what it does, uh, and for version things. Um, so multi multi line comments are started with a uh, with a forward slash and an asterisk, and they're closed with uh, with an asterisk and the forward slash in the opposite way. Um, so they can occupy as many lines as, as, as possible. But anyway, what happens when a super collider sees these is it doesn't do anything. It, it ignores them because it knows that they're for us as programmers and not actually part of the program. Um, so let's clear that up just to get a bit of, get, get it a bit clearer. Um, so the next thing that we're going to look at are statements. Um, so, when we're talking to Super Collider, we need to remember that um, it it ignores white space. So, um, if I type this, if I type our uh, our Hello World program out, um, actually no, let's let's do it slightly differently. If I do our uh, our startup file, uh, server dot default equals server dot local semicolon uh, and then s equals server dot whoops server dot default and then s dot boot we've already seen the use of statements uh, because they make up everything statements are just everything <laughs> pretty much um, so inside these brackets we have three statements I've divided them up by putting uh, returns in after each of them, but Super Collider ignores white space, which means Super Collider sees this, and it doesn't know where to s where you've put a sentence in effectively. So st think of a statement like a sentence to the computer. Um, so it will look for a semicolon and then execute whatever's behind it, and then it will carry on and execute what's behind it, and carry on and execute what's behind it. We put in the ca the, the case returns, or the carriage returns, just so that we know what's going on. It makes it clearer for us. But just remember that um, that's uh, what a statement is. It's just a, a sentence of code um, that we need to execute. And obviously Super Collider is a top-down language, so it will set this first, and then it will do this, and then it will do this. Um, it will do whatever it uh, it gets first. 
Um, so that's what statements are. Um, so the next thing I'm going to look very briefly at, um, actually the next video will be completely about these. Um, so we're going to very briefly look at variables. Um, so there's two types, there's global and uh, instance variables, but we're just going to we're just going to cover that uh, in the next video. Um, so a variable is a name for a... If you think of a variable as a name for uh, a chunk of information that we need to use. Um, so A, if I want to... Um, I'm just telling SuperCollider I'm going to be using something called A and that's going to be equal to 440. Um, and we put our semicolon in to uh, make it a statement, uh, a fully valid statement, and then we hit shift return, which executes um, that line of code, and it spits out 440 into the post window, um, because SuperCollider posts the last thing it was dealing with out to the post window, um, which was 440, even though it was A. So if I ask it what A is, just by executing A, it will chuck out 440 again. So I'll just clear the post window so you can definitely see it. 440 chucked out. So if I then have B equal to 2, right, execute that again, then it's stored in the uh, in the memory of the computer. Um, so it remembers. So A is 440, B is 2. Um, so what we can do is do simple maths um, with on the, on these two variables, just so you can see what what you can use them for. Um, so, in programming the mathematical operators, mathematical operators are as follows: you have plus, that's not plus, that's a plus. You have minus, you have multiply, which is an asterisk, and divide is a forward slash. Um, so, uh, if I just use my single line comments to uh, comment about what each of these are, multiply, and then divide. Now, an important thing to know about SuperCollider is mathematical operators don't have any precedence. So, um, if we do um, 5 plus 2 times 3 it's going to give us 21 but if we force it by including brackets because brackets force precedence in Super Collider then we get 11 which is the actual answer um, if when we're applying the standard rules of precedence in maths um, so if you just remember, SuperCollider does maths in the order that you give it, so you have to force everything. Um, so A uh, plus B is going to equal 442. And then if we do, just to clarify, times B, that's going to give us 884. But if we force it to operate properly, we get 444. So, there we go. Um, there's your basic look at some programming basics. Um, the next video is going to have a more in-depth look at variables. Uh, we're going to look at global variables, instance variables, the, distance, the, the difference between them, and... Um, what they're used for, how we can use them more effectively, and uh, we're also going to look at variable scope um, because sometimes you'll find that you can't access variables in certain places uh, and that's because of the scope. Um, but anyway, as always, thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts or comments, please leave them below. Um, I will try to reply to anything that I need to and uh, yeah, hopefully now that SuperCollider is a bit more uh, universal, shall we say, on all platforms, we can have uh, we can have even we could even have some friends on Windows, maybe, uh, possibly at, at at some point, um, and I might be able to help you out because I know what it looks like now. 
um, which is very exciting. But anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.